Before this video starts, I'd like to thank all of you for the support on the last few videos I've posted. As I'm recording this, my first video is just about to hit 80 views, which is actually kind of insane. I really appreciate you all for taking the time to watch a goofball like me make average Minecraft modded videos. Anyways, enjoy the video. Oh hey there. So you fully prepared yourself for your first fall day? And now you want to know how to complete it? I might have what you're looking for then. What is going on people? Welcome back to my Vault Hunters 1.18 starter guide. In this video, I'll be going over how the vaults actually work, clarifying various mechanics inside of a vault, and some strategies on how to complete your first vault successfully. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into the video. Vaults are randomly generated dungeons that serve as the primary way of obtaining loot and resources in the Vault Hunters 1.18 mod pack. Vaults get progressively bigger and more difficult to complete as your vault level increases. They can be generated in three different layouts, which are square, circle, and diamond. Vaults are made up of large open rooms that have small narrow pathways that connect to other large open rooms. Each vault will have a theme applied to it at random. As of December 29th, there are 18 current vault themes, and those are as follows. Cave, Mesa, Desert, Winter, Dripstone, Honey, Crystal Caves, Pirate, Waste, Candyland, Lush Cave, The End, The Nether, and Raffle. While you are in a vault, you'll be coming across multiple types of chests. In Vault Hunters 1.18, there are six different chest types that all focus on specific types of loot. There's Wooden, Gilded, Living, Ornate, Altar, and Treasure Chests. Wooden chests are your basic chest, and they usually contain general low tier loot. Gilded chests focus on vault enhancing things such as catalysts, fragments, and vault diamonds. Living chests focus on leveling up, such as skill essence or knowledge essence. Ornate chests focus on vault gear and vault gear crafting materials. Altar chests can contain any sort of loot, however at the time of recording this they aren't that good and usually contain junk. And finally, treasure chests, which give crazy good loot, however they can only be accessed behind treasure doors. Each of these chests will either be common, rare, epic, or omega rarity, with common yielding the least amount of loot and omega yielding the most amount of loot. Those large open rooms I was talking about before are going to be the place where you get all your loot. However, there's three different types of rooms that can generate. The first room type I will be talking about is the common room. As the name implies, these are going to be the rooms that you're going to see the most often while you're inside of a vault. Common rooms have randomly generated structures littered throughout them called points of interests or PUIs. PUIs are going to be the place where you find most of your loot in Vault Hunters. POIs can either contain vault chests, vault ores, point piles, or a mix of the two. Each of these will have a mob spawner accompanied alongside it. Mob spawners in a vault can either be a fizzle spawner or a non-fizzle spawner. A fizzle spawner will fizzle out after one wave of mobs has spawned. However, a non-fizzle spawner will keep spawning waves of mobs regardless and will only stop when you break the spawner. On top of the PUIs, there's a chance that an altar chest will spawn in any given common room. Altar chests require a sacrifice in order to open them, for example, some of your XP levels or some of the remaining time in the vault. The next room type I'll be talking about are challenge rooms. Challenge rooms don't generate as often as common rooms do. Challenge rooms are more difficult and have far more mobs than common rooms, however they are much more rewarding than common rooms. The looting areas are not as random as a common room, and unlike common rooms, they aren't randomly generated, but rather fixed or stagnant. The final room type, known as Omega Rooms, have all the benefits of a challenge room, and zero downsides of one. This means there's tons of free loot lying around, and absolutely zero mob spawners. They are built very similar to challenge rooms, meaning they are stagnant and they are not randomly generated. However, some Omega rooms are loot focused, such as vault ore mining or strictly ornate chests. Because of the rewards you can get from an Omega room, the chances of one generating inside of a vault is really low. Now that we know what the vaults contain, let's talk about vault mechanics. 
When you first enter a vault, you will have a 25 minute counter that counts down, provided that you don't have any external buffs or nerfs that decrease or increase that time. That is the amount of time you have left in a vault. And if you have not left the vault via the vault portal when that clock hits zero, that's game over for you. As long as you are running a vault that is level 10 and under, or you have the casual mode game rule applied, you are unable to lose all your items if you die in a vault. Another way to know if you won't lose your items while in a vault is if you have the beginner's grace effect applied to the vault. Another thing you'll notice when you enter a vault is either an icon in the bottom left that says monoliths or obelisks, or a bunch of items at the top of the screen. This is your vault objective. On top of all the loot that you can get in a vault, if you complete the vault objective, you'll be rewarded a bunch of vault experience as well as a creative loot that can contain vault gems and artifacts. Now, back to the actual vault objectives. Monoliths are lanterns that can be lit up by right-clicking on the monolith. The amount of monoliths you need to light in order to complete the objective is usually random, but for your first vault it'll be about 2-4. to four. These monoliths can be found around the many common rooms. However, they don't usually spawn in obvious spots, meaning you'll need to search a large portion of each common room in order to find them. Next up, we have obelisks. Obelisks are very similar to monoliths. In your first few vaults, you will need to find about 2-4 to four of them in order to complete the objective. What sets obelisks apart from monoliths, though, is that they will be way easier to find, as they usually spawn in the middle of a common room. On top of that, once you light the final monolith, a boss will spawn, which will constantly attack you using range attacks and melee attacks. You'll be able to leave the vault after you kill the boss, in which you'll be automatically teleported back to the overworld once you kill it. The last vault objective you can get is scavenger hunts. You'll be tasked with finding a bunch of items, however you can only get those items from certain chests, coin piles, or mobs. For example, you may be asked to find something like purple mob essence. The icon located right next to the item you are trying to find is the only thing that you can get that item from. And so if you were looking for purple mob essence, you target that specific source in order to find it. Once you get this item, you'll be able to trade it in at these green tables to complete the objective. The green tables spawn similar to monoliths, but are more common. Scavenger hunts, on average, are harder to complete than monoliths or obelisks, however they yield better rewards in the form of scavenger crates. Okay, that was probably a lot, but that's just about everything you need to know in order to be well on your way to completing a vault. Speaking of completing a vault, let's do that. Before you go into the vault, you are going to go to keybinds and look up quark inventory and then tick the category box. Next, you are going to bind the sort target inventory to an accessible key to you. For me, it is X, but you may have a different key that you want to bind it to. This will allow you to quickly sort the inventory of a vault chest and then grab what you want out of it easily. I'm going to go over this footage of me running a level 0 vault in depth and give you all some tips that you should remember when you do your first vault. So when I first started off, I made a note of the cardinal direction that my vault portal was in. I even put it in chat just to make sure. And that is because inside of a vault, the map is completely disabled, meaning you only have the minimap to guide you. Remembering the direction of where you came from will stop you from getting lost and wasting time trying to find your way back. You can see that when I enter the first room, I make a little pillar with a block sticking out towards the middle, and you should do this whenever you enter any new room so that you can remember your path back to the vault portal. Now, I'm about to approach my first PUI here, and you can see that I'm staying relatively far away and just trying to mow the mobs down using my bow instead of rushing straight in with my axe. I do this because when you are inside of a vault, there is no passive healing whatsoever. The only way to heal in a vault is with golden apples, healing potions, or an ability called heal. But this is your first vault, so you won't have any of that kind of stuff. Or maybe just one golden apple, but that's about it. And so, the best way to do a vault with no healing is to not take damage in the first place, which can be accomplished by using a ranged weapon. You can see in this footage that I'm taking things really slow. Yes, going fast will give you more time to loot, but that also increases the risk of you dying. The best advice I can give to any new Vault Hunters player is take your time. You have 25 whole minutes to loot, 
and going too fast before you get used to the vault will increase the chances of you dying. I've done many, many vaults before, and so I'll probably take more risks than the average Vault Hunter player. However, I recommend you minimize those risks until you run more and more vaults. Another thing you'll notice in this footage is that I grab basically everything from each chest, leaving behind stuff like torches, scaffolding, books, and bread. This brings me to the golden rule of Vault Hunters, which is, if you do not recognize it, grab it. It may not be useful to you right now, however, you'll thank your past self for grabbing it when you need it later on. On top of taking it slow and cautious, I'm also not worried about the vault objective, and that is because the first vault is all about survival. The only vault objective I would recommend doing is monoliths, because that's probably the easiest one to do. However, don't prioritize it over getting loot and staying alive. Once you've gotten lots of loot and the vault time is running low, or you're just low on health, it's probably time to make your way back to the vault portal and exit. Simply follow your previous markers and exit the vault. Congratulations! You survived your first vault! You wanna know how you can thank me? You could subscribe. That's one way you could do it. That's one way you could thank me. But I won't force you to do it. Anyways guys, that is all for today's video. If you found this video helpful in any way, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. Apologies for the long wait times between uploads. I've been relatively busy, but I hope I can make some more content over the course of the winter holidays. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you later. See ya.